Today we've got a lineup of helmet mountable digital night vision binoculars. We're going to rank together in a tier list style video and we've tested out a ton of different digital night vision devices here on the channel and the units sitting on this table represent many of the most popular offerings in a wide range of price points, many of which you've probably seen or heard of if you're considering purchasing digital night vision and the units we're going to be looking at are the ADNV G14 P2 and also the ADNV G14 SE, the Psionics Opsin, the NV NVG lineup including the NVG 30, the NVG 10, and the new NVG 40 and the NVG 40 Pro, the PVS 69 DIY Digital Night Vision, the Night Fox Prowl, and the Night Operators Max 2.0. We're going to start off with the discussion of what I consider to be the most important consideration points for digital night vision, and then diving deeper into the strengths and weaknesses of each device as we add them to a tier list. In order to rank these monoculars, I've created a scoring system and given each device a score out of 100 based on their performance with no IR lighting, their field of view, the latency of the device, their build quality, their size and weight, mounting options, and battery types. The first category we're going to address is no IR performance. IR light can be seen from hundreds of meters away, and while it's invisible to the naked eye, it is very obvious to anybody else running night vision, and I've given this category the most weight with a total of 30 points available. We're going to take a look at a few different comparisons, and I've also included a Gen 2 Plus white phosphor PVS-14 as an analog versus digital reference point. All these photos were taken using a Google Pixel 7 smartphone with identical settings and the photo that we've been looking at has IR lighting turned on and these devices are also set to their maximum frame rates. Now we've turned IR lighting off and there's a very small amount of ambient lighting coming into the room and it's very difficult to see anything with the naked eye and as you can see the performance of the top row devices is still pretty good and you can still make out some contrast in the target with the MVG 10 and the MVG 40. We can see a bit of the target outline with the night operators max 2.0 and with the pvs 69 and we've lost visibility completely with the mvg 40 pro and the night fox prowl now we're going to shut the door and remove pretty much all the ambient lighting and now nothing is visible in this direction with the naked eye but we are still able to get a very good picture with the adnv g14 p2 the g14 se is about on par with the analog gen 2 plus night vision and we're able to see a very minor outline of the target with the mvg 30 and the opsin but we have completely lost visibility with the rest of the devices in the lineup. Field of view is another important category and I've allowed 20 points here and it's easy to get an idea of how their fields of view compare by looking at this photo. Generally, the wider field of view, the more you'll be able to see and the easier it is to navigate. Smaller field of view devices do have their purpose, but since we're considering these for helmet mounting, I'm going to favor a wider field of view units. But if that's not a concern for you and you'd rather use them for longer distance applications, then you can adjust your scoring accordingly. Latency is that slight delay between the time light passes through the sensor and displays on the screen of the eyepiece. And all digital devices have some latency but some are much faster than others and in some devices it's really not even noticeable and in my experience just because a device has a higher frame rate doesn't always mean that it will translate to lower latency. In order to test this we've got all the devices turned on and we're going to turn off the light to see how quickly they react and this will give us a pretty good idea of their performance. We're going to go frame by frame and immediately we can see that the ADNV devices, the Psionics Opsin, and the PVS69 react. In the next frame we can see the MVG30, the MVG40, and the Night Operators Max 2.0 react. Then we see the Night Fox Prowl and the MVG10 react, and it isn't until a few frames later that we see any action on the MVG40 Pro. 20 points were allocated to this category. Build quality is another factor that came into my ranking system, and each device was given a score out of 5 based on the quality of the housing materials and buttons, internal components like sensors and displays, and general water resistance. Size and weight is another important consideration for helmet mountable devices, so all these devices were given a score out of 5 based on their size and weight and awarded more points for being lighter and smaller. Mounting options is a category with a weight of five points and for this category we looked at their variety of mounting options, compatibility of bridging two units together, quality of included helmet mounting options, and compatibility with aftermarket accessories. Finally battery types is given five points and this score is given based on the battery type, whether they're built-in or replaceable batteries, and the charging options. All of these devices have been scored out of 100 and I'll leave a link to this database down in the description in case anybody wants to check that out. And then to help visualize it a bit better I added everything up 
and put all this data together and plotted everything on a scatter chart. And on the Y axis, you can see the price of these devices. And on the X axis, you can see their score out of 100. You can pause the video here if you want to take a little time to study it. And there were some clear standouts here. And many of the lower tier devices are pretty much clumped together. So now we're going to break all this stuff down and discuss the pros and cons to each device as we add them to the tier list. The ADNV G14 P2 was the standout performer across the board. And there's no doubt that ADNV has significantly disrupted the high end of the digital night vision industry. The P2 offers excellent field of view, very low latency, high frame rates, a one inch second generation high performance CMOS solid state image sensor, delivering the best low light, no IR performance of the group. And in my opinion, it's definitely better in this department compared to the Gen 2 Plus PVS-14 analog night vision tube. Hype Militaria recently put out a video comparing this device to some other analog devices. So if you wanna learn more, go check out that video after you finish watching this one. And I'll leave a link to that down below. The device is very lightweight, you can swap between 16340s, CR123As, and 18650 batteries. So there's a lot of flexibility here, and the included mounting hardware is exceptional and it allows for bridging. It would also have been nice to see digital zoom on this device, and the only thing really holding back the P2 is its price and it's priced somewhere between Gen 2 and Gen 3. But as far as I'm aware, this is the best digital night vision monocular on the market, but it is also expensive, which is why it's placed into the tier A and not into the S tier. The ADNV G14 SE was another exceptional performer, offering many of the same specs and accessories as the G14 P2. Its two thirds inch second generation CMOS sensor outperforms every device in the lineup with the exception of the P2, with slightly weaker low light, no IR performance, and it's on par with the Gen 2 Plus PVS-14 and significantly better than the performance of the Cyanex Opsin. And when you consider it's priced a lot less than the Opsin, it becomes a very attractive option for those of you serious about high performing digital night vision. There is a more in-depth review on this device on the channel, and we are gonna be diving deeper into these comparisons with dedicated videos in the next few weeks. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. This device will rest in the S tier and the price difference between the G14 SE and the P2 definitely makes the SE a very attractive option. The Cyanex Opsin has dominated the high end of digital night vision monoculars for the past few years and until very recently it was the best option out there. Low light no IR performance is slightly less good than Gen 2 Plus analog but the full color viewing mode is nice because the additional color contrast makes it easier to spot things compared to monochromatic setups. The UI and menu options are exceptional on this device and the build quality is great and seem to be on par with the ADNV models and it does record very nice high quality video. The battery pack is a bit bulky and it does add considerable weight to the setup but the including mounting hardware is pretty good but unfortunately it can't be bridged as far as I'm aware. This device will fall into the A tier because it does still offer quite a bit especially now that the price has dropped down under $2,000 but in most cases I would recommend the G14 SE over this model due to its weaker low light performance. Next up we have the MVG30 which was released within the past year and it's an upgrade to the MVG10 and this device was a clear standout performer in the budget category. Mounting options out of the box are good, but there is compatibility with Wilcox systems, which is a big plus for aftermarket accessories. And the device is excellent for bridging and can run off of a removable 18650 battery or an external USB-C power supply. The MVG30 also has a robust UI, easy onboard recording, and many viewing modes designed to emulate analog tubes, but it also has a color viewing mode, which doesn't quite have the same range as a Cyanex Opsin, but it does provide more contrast compared to the monochromatic viewing modes. Low light performance is definitely better than the naked eye and with decent moonlight no IR is needed but if you go into darker and shaded areas you may need to rely on IR lighting but I will leave some links to some videos down below so you can see how it performs with a bunch of different lighting conditions and up against some other devices. The field of view is also a little more constricting compared to the devices we looked at previously but it is wider than many of the lower priced units and there is a wide angle lens mod on the horizon so stay tuned to the channel for more updates on that. There is slightly more latency with this device compared to the Opsin, but it is an improvement over the MVG-10 and the Night Fox Prowl, but the latency is comparable to night operators, the PVS-69, and the MVG-40 units. It is a step down from the Opsin, but when you consider how much cheaper it is, it's quite an attractive option, and none of the other sub $500 budget devices come close to its performance, which is why it will sit alone in the B tier. Now we're going to dive into the lower cost units, and the MVG-10 is a sub $300 device with similar mounting capabilities to the MVG-30, 
30 and the build quality is pretty good and it runs off of a removable 18650 but it does lack onboard charging and recording but you can broadcast a video feed via Wi-Fi to capture video on your smartphone and these shortcomings were addressed by the MVG30. It does have a decent low light sensor but it's not nearly as good as the MVG30 but it is better than the sub $200 units at low light no IR performance and the latency isn't bad but it's constricting field of view puts it at a disadvantage to the night operators max 2.0 and the night fox prowl for close range viewing and navigating but it is a better unit for mid-range observation it is a great option for stargazing and also a good handheld unit but seeing as how it is a bit more expensive than the other budget devices we are going to put it into the d tier next we have the mvg40 which is the most budget friendly device in the lineup and surprisingly the no ir performance was the best of the sub 200 dollars devices but unless you have a lot of moonlight to work with you will be heavily reliant on running IR lighting. The build quality is a bit underwhelming, but it does include a dovetail compatible mounting arm, and it can be bridged if you mount these devices upside down. It does have USB-C charging, but the battery is built in, so you can't change it on the go. But the menu options are pretty good, and it does give you the ability to record decent quality video. It has a full circular display, which offers a more analog-like experience, and I do think that the performance is very good for the price and worthy of C-tier placement, and it is a cheaper competitor of the night operators max 2.0 the mvg40 pro is mostly identical to the mvg40 so it does have many of the same shortcomings but it does have a color sensor and a slightly better looking ui low light performance is slightly weaker on the mvg40 pro compared to the mvg40 and it is heavily reliant on ir lighting but again the color viewing mode is a pretty cool feature and might help you spot things that you might otherwise miss with monochromatic devices and it also has very good onboard 4k video recording capabilities which are definitely better than any of the rest of the devices around the same price point. Since it is a bit more expensive than the MVG40 and the no IR performance is worse, I believe its position rests in the D tier, but if you're okay with running IR lighting, then it's not a bad choice for the price. Next up, we have a PVS69 Echo, and this is a DIY night vision solution. And I wanna give a shout out to Extruded Shoots for loaning this to me to make this review. And he makes a lot of cool night vision content on his channel, so definitely go check him out. And I'll leave a link to his channel down below, along with some different build guides for the PVS69. There is an updated alpha version, which should have slightly improved specs. And the version we have is a bino setup, but you can also configure it as a monocular. The housing is 3D printed and does take a bit of time and effort to put together on your own, but overall it does feel very durable. There's no onboard recording and there's really not much you can do in terms of making adjustments in the menu and there's not much in terms of menu options but there is a lot of potential for improvements to the pvs69 in the future you can run this device off two cr123s and while it is a device that's very heavily reliant on supplemental ir lighting it does have an exceptionally wide field of view and very low latency so if you don't have any problem with running supplemental ir and want something designed with close quarters navigation in mind this would definitely be an interesting option and is going to rest in the C tier. The Night Fox Prowl is a device that's gotten a lot of attention over the past year and it can perform well with ample moonlight but it is also very reliant on higher lighting. The build quality is okay on this device and you do have the option of running it as a monocular or a binocular. It runs off of a replaceable 18650 battery. It has USB-C charging and video recording capabilities and the menu options are pretty good. So they definitely did do a good job with the feature set. The field of view is also quite wide on this device but one major issue holding it back is latency, which seems to be the slowest of all the devices here. And it does have a lot of lag. And for these reasons, it's difficult for me to recommend it for anything related to quick movement. So it's gonna be placed into the D tier, but if you're not gonna be making rapid movements and you're okay with running IR lighting, then it's not a bad device. Night Operators is another brand that gets a lot of attention on social media and their Max 2.0 is definitely an interesting contender at the $200 price point. The build quality is not the greatest, and the mounting options are pretty flimsy and it does have a built-in battery but you can charge it via USB-C. The menu options are really basic and there's no onboard video recording so everything you see here is recorded through a smartphone and I had a tough time getting it to focus so the quality of the video is pretty bad and the image that you see will be much better when looking through the device. It does have a decently wide field of view and the latency is pretty low but again the no IR performance is pretty poor so you will need to rely on IR lighting in most instances to run this device. I decided to place this into the C tier and it does perform pretty well considering the price 
and is most comparable to the MVG40. If you want to learn more about any of these digital night vision monoculars and you also want to help support my channel, you can find links down in the description. And I also want to disclose that many of these products are available on my website, Goodnight Gear Shop, but you can use the coupon code US10 to save 10% site wide. Let me know if there's any other night vision devices that you'd like to see compared head to head, and feel free to share your thoughts on these devices down in the comments below.